Hello everybody. Hope you all are doing well and hope you all are staying safe. So I am meeting you all after quite some time now. Um, let's uh, begin today's session. Uh, today we will discuss what is SC Linux decision making process in Android kernel. Okay. Uh, so in my previous uh, session, one of the session on SE Linux I had done where I had explained uh, what is SE Linux, what is its importance, why actually we require SE Linux in Linux. Uh, if you uh, want to go back and get a basic understanding of that, I will post the link of that video in the description so you all can go through it and understand the SE Linux concepts. Today mainly uh, we'll dive a little in depth for this SE Linux decision making process. So let's get started. So uh, before actually moving on, I just want to have a recap of what we learned in our previous session about SE Linux. Uh, SE Linux is nothing but security enhanced Linux. Okay, we all know we use Android phones and Android is based on Linux kernel. So SE Linux is a part of uh, Linux security model. It just aims to provide more security to the user. Okay, uh, so uh, we are depending on our uh, smartphones a lot and lot nowadays right for everything so we uh, actually store a uh, lots of sensitive data including our banking uh, related information everything we are storing on our device and it is very important to take care that some hackers or some malicious attackers will not be able to access the sensitive data easily for that purpose to uh, protect the sensitivity and integrity of data, SC Linux was actually introduced. Um, so uh, you all know that in Linux, uh, there are two types of access mechanisms, DAC and MAC. Okay, so discretionary access control, which is short formed as DAC, that also we can access the different file system. So SC Linux makes sure uh, the user or a process with correct permissions only are able to access the particular file systems okay uh, no uh, like a random user or a random process cannot come in and cannot access the root files or some important um, sensitive information which is stored in the files or directory okay so SC Linux makes sure uh, if I am trying to access some file, SC Linux makes sure I have all the rights and I have all the permissions, access rights to act to actually access that particular file. Uh, like uh, ra some random person cannot come and start accessing my root files, okay? So this access control mechanism is there in Linux. Okay, it will decide like who is allowed to access what files. Under that access control mechanism, there are two types, discretionary access control mechanism and mandatory access control mechanism. Uh, the discretionary access control mechanism, one of the drawback is that uh, you can access the root files indirectly. So even the root files can be accessed indirectly. So because of this drawback, uh, we came up with something called uh, MAC, Mandatory Access Control, where everything is treated in the form of objects and subjects. Okay, so all the files, directories, devices, all these will be treated as the objects and the commands which we use to access these are treated as subject. So SC Linux is actually based on mandatory access control where everything uh, we define action, we define rule, we define the uh, file type, context, everything we define and only if all these rules are uh, meeting the user will be allowed to access a particular directory or a file. So that is mandatory access control and SC Linux is actually based on mandatory access control. So that was a brief uh, recap I wanted to do. Uh, so in SC Linux, everything is treated as objects, okay? Be it a file, a process, or user ID, everything is treated as object, and there are rules written for every user. Uh, there are few rules, there are contexts, uh, there are roles, 
all these are defined previously only only if i uh, meet all this criteria i will be given access to that particular file so this is how se linux works so this much is enough for introduction let's move on with our next topic so se linux decision making process so as i already told there are rules written in the form like this so there is system there is object and there are rules all these things will be written right so all the rules will be stored in avc cache okay so when an app or any process tries to access a file this policy enforcement server in the kernel will check the avc cache that is access vector cache where app and file permissions are cached so here it will be defined oh this particular app will be able to access only these xyz files okay and they will not be able to access any other files do not give them permission like that it will be defined in this particular cache so first whenever i uh, have a request first i will check in this avc cache only if it is not there i will go forward to security server so if a decision cannot be made based on the data available in uh, this vector cache then it proceeds further to the security server to check the security context of the app and file in the matrix so this security uh, se linux security server what it will do it will in turn have uh, uh, contact with se linux policy database so if the rules are not present rules or permission is not available in the first step it will actually go to this database where it can uh, check if that permission is granted or denied so if permission is then granted or denied uh, uh, it will be logged in the log cat and d message okay with avc denied so it will get the information from here based on that it will decide if that particular rule has permission or no so if there is no permission we log the message avc denied in the log cat if we have permission yes i am able to access a particular object object in the sense a file or a process or a directory so uh, this is the uh, decision making process how it works so everything starts from this avc cache everything is cached here so from here if we do not get we directly go to the uh, security server check the policy database where different policies are written here based on the data retrieved from here we decide if permission is granted or no so the security context of app and files is applied from the installed policy which also provides further info to populate security servers matrix so this is how the decision making process in sc linux works so uh, now we'll see the different sc linux enforcement states okay so there are three different states in sc linux so the first one is disabled here what will happen your sc linux policy is not enabled okay no security checks will happen in this particular state no security checks will happen like any random person can come he can access any file and do whatever he wants but um now we cannot use this disabled state in latest versions of android that is from 8 and onwards this state has been deprecated okay now we cannot use because uh, we are focusing on securing our data so we cannot actually use this particular state uh we'll go to next state enforcing state so in this enforcing state i have a particular action and what i will do uh, i will enforce the policies and strictly deny the action try to perform by the domain i will check each and every label the type of the file who is trying to access what file if i really have the permission so i will check in detail everything okay only if uh, i am confident i in the sense i'm talking about the linux server so only if that se linux is confident that yes uh, this particular uh, process 
has permission to access that particular process or file only then i give the permission so in enforcing state what happens is if i don't have a particular in enforcing state what happens is if i don't have a particular permission to access a file or something avc denied error will be thrown in your um a uh, log cat as well as i will not be able to access the any file okay i will not be given permission to access the file and at the same time the error will be thrown now let's go to our uh, third state which is permissive so in permissive state what happens sc linux will just log the denial but it will not enforce them which means that it will tell you don't have permission to access this particular file avc denied error will be thrown but still behind the scene it will give the permission there okay behind the scene uh, i mean uh, we will be given permission to access any uh, resources it will not block the accessing but just it locks one particular error so this is the permissive state so uh, i will connect one of my device to the adb shell so uh, we'll execute few adb commands so you'll get uh, more understanding of um, this sc linux and i'll also uh, give few adb commands to set to enforcing mode and permissive mode so let's go there here i have connected my device uh, so i just wanted to show few commands uh, related to sc linux so my device is connected uh, so sc linux i told everything is represented in the form of objects right uh, so uh, let me go to adb shell inside my device ls we can go inside any folder okay for example here i'm going inside the data folder and here um, usually if we do ls minus la it will list all the contents right but uh, similarly if we do ls minus l capital z it will list everything in the form of representation of objects okay sorry uh, we should use ls minus lz so uh, your everything is represented in the form of objects you all can see here so this first one is a user after the semicolon whatever is there that is the object so your object is object underscore r and uh, after semicolon whatever is your adb data files that is the file type and the last entry is the level okay so user object the file type and the level everything is represented in this particular format we have to use ls minus lz for that okay and if we want to see the running processes in the form of this sc linux format which is nothing but mandatory access control so mandatory access control everything is represented in the form of objects sc linux is based on this mandatory access control <coughs> so let me do ps minus e z will uh, get a list of all the processes running in my device and it's again in the form of this representation so how this labeling is done all this i'll explain in my next session for now you just understand i'm just giving the different commands to see so we saw uh, the list of uh, processes running the list of contents uh, in the form of sc linux see here this is the user this is the object and the file type is private application and the security level is s0 if we want to get to know uh, the user ids okay uh, in this format we'll just use id minus z so this is again the user id su su means the super user because here i'm using the engineering device so that's why it's showing as i'm i have the su access next um if i want to see uh, a particular file in this slinus format only a particular file then i can give ls minus capital z and file name for example okay let me go back one directory 
okay so i have some init.rc file here so i can show the contents of that file um so ls minus z and my file name is init.rc so this is how it's represented for every file so if you want to know the permission of every file you can just give ls hyphen z followed by the file name of which you want to see the permission so here this is the user this is the object and this is the type of the file this is obviously a root file system so it is shown as root fs and this is the level security level okay so uh, now if you want to set um, the permissive mode or enforcing mode or if you want to know what is the exactly current set sc linux mode we can use this get enforce command so get enforce command is currently set to permissive so if i want to set it to enforcing i should use set enforce command and set it to one okay now i have set it to one again i will get enforce and my status enforcing state so let me show you uh, out of adb how to sorry out of the shell if i come what is the exact command so the command will be adb shell get enforce this will give me what type of mode it's there okay it's a linux mode default is now deprived uh, so enforcing and permissive these two modes are supported now i want to set it to permissive so adb shell set enforce and give it a zero now it will be set to permissive if we want to know what it is set do adb shell get enforce and it's set to permissive so these were the different commands i just wanted to show here um, with that we come to the end of this session and as usual um, today's question will be it's very simple question is sc linux based on mac or dax so as i already explained sc linux is actually based on mandatory access control discretionary access control will not provide that much security when it comes to the root file i can use some uh, incorrect privileges and somehow i can get access to the uh, root file systems okay but uh, using dax so that's why it's not considered safe and uh, everything uh, in mac is uh, based on the objects okay the levels the users the objects context all these are created for each and every type of file and sc linux is based on mac so uh, with this we come to end of today's um, session i hope this was informative and helpful in my next session i will uh, explain about the labeling how this labeling is done in sc linux policies okay uh, hope it was helpful uh, thanks everyone for watching this video i'll catch you all soon in my next session until then everyone take care bye